going on everybody? It's your boys, Bees the Trackster, and welcome back to Dance and Master Class. So, Master Bus Processing or Mix Bus Processing or Processing from the Master Bus. <laughs> it's very simple. Um, basically, we have a good mix, right? And in more advanced stages of the course, we are going to approach master bus or mix bus processing totally different. But for right now, for all beginners or 90% of all beginners, when you make a beat, 90% of the time, you master the beat in IFL Studio. Or you do what you think is a master of the beat, you know what I mean? So, let's get to what I do. So, in this situation, like I said, I had, don't have the resources that I typically have available to me, so I'll just work with what I have, right? And learn on the go. This list of plugins that I have, this DD stuff, the Dead Dog stuff, I've never used. I've used the EQ once, but before this course, I've never used it. You know, I just wanted to get something that everybody could use and, and could get familiar with. So let's get started so the first thing on my master bus always is an eq the only reason an eq might not be the first plugin is because i have like a filter or some sort of effect that affects the whole beat aside from that every single bus starts with an eq and the reason for that is because over time adding up all these instruments sum, summing up all these instruments causes a lot of unwanted frequencies to meet up on the master bus because every instrument has frequencies that aren't wanted especially the low end and the super high end frequencies that you can't hear anyway that can cloud a mix or muddy up a mix so what i do is the most drastic curve i can get like that on both ends so we're doing a high pass and a low pass. Yes, I did create the full wave or the high and low pass filter preset, but I just wanted to do it from scratch. So what I do is I like to operate, especially with low frequencies, right around 35 to 40 hertz. I like to get rid of anything below that. And then on the top end side, I typically start fading frequencies once we get up to like 19,600 we start getting rid of frequencies above that so that's what I'm going to do here so if we play this without we loop the chorus for this when you're doing any type of you know master bus processing you want to be at the loudest section of your song where the most instruments are playing at that particular time so I'm going to do this at the chorus so if we play this track This is without the processing and this is with the processing now the things that immediately poke out to me is the top end gets a little bit brighter and the low end gets fatter and it comes forward even more even though we are cutting low end and cutting top end the thing with that is it gets rid of mud so when you get rid of mud like let's think of it like a, 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 a bucket of water. If you get rid of, if you get a bucket of water and it's filled with, with mud at the bottom, you know, or just mud all over and you try to stick your hand in there, it's, it's very hard. Your hand can't reach the bottom so easily. But if you take that same bucket, filter out all of the mud, separate the water and try to stick your hand in the bucket with just pure water in it, it gets to the bottom effortlessly so that's basically what i'm doing like i said if you listen to the low end and the top end with the eq on it just becomes a little bit clearer louder and i'm not boosting anything And some people might say, oh, well, I didn't hear anything and da 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 
it comes with experience. You know, every time I do something, you want to hear it. We have different ears, but I can notice a difference. You understand? So that's the first thing. The very next thing is bus compression. So in this situation, I don't believe I have a dedicated bus compressor. I can see if I have one. Let's try this dead duck compressor. Okay, so it seems based loosely on a bus compressor. So we have the clarity that we want. So now we use a compressor to now kind of bring everything together. You know what I mean? So we leave this on at all times. My settings, they vary. Sometimes they change, but 90% of the times they don't. The only thing that may change is the threshold. The ratio attack release are always almost the same thing. So basic compressor, how to? You have input gain, meaning the signal coming into the compressor, you can boost it before you start to compress. Threshold, that's when the compressor starts to work. Ratio is how hard the compressor works. Attack is how fast the compressor works. Trim is basically, it, this, this has a side chain function, right? We won't get into none of this right now. None of this. So trim, not trim, makeup gain is basically the gain of the signal. So when you compress the signal, you have to boost the signal back. So if we compress 3 dB, we make up 3 dB. That's basically what it is. Mix is basically saying how much of the compressed signal do I want versus how much of the dry signal I want. That's a basic compressor how-to. Easy. So let's start. Let's um, dial in. I like my ratio to be 2 to 1 when I am compressing. So very quick. Are very small ratio, a very low ratio. Let's play. And as you can see, and here we are getting compression. So my thing is with compression, I don't like fast attacks. Currently, this is set to the fastest attack. So that means immediately as the signal goes over the threshold, it's getting compressed. I don't like that, especially for a master bus, because that can really destroy your drums. If I were to, let's say I lower the threshold. Basically, my kick and bass is, is gone. But, let's go back up. If I were to increase the attack and say, just wait. Then my kick and my bass still comes through. It, it, it allows them to come through without act, attacking the signal too much. My preferred ratio and attack, or my preferred um, attack time is 30 milliseconds. The SSL bus compressor, either the real hardware or the software, they operate on 30 milliseconds is the maximum you can get as far as attack times. So I like to have mine at, at, um, at 30 milliseconds. Release, like I said, is how fast you want the compressor to let go of the signal when it compresses. So basically, if you look at this, let's compress. Release is basically how long it takes this orange bar to go back to zero. So if I were to put this back to the fastest release, you can see it goes up pretty fast. That's basically what release does. I like to have the fastest release possible. So I leave that all the way down. It's set to what, 50 milliseconds, which is actually slow. There are much faster release times. The SSL compressor I just mentioned has a release time of 0 0.1 milliseconds, which is ridiculously fast. So we have threshold set, we have ratio set, attack set, release set. Now the only thing we need to do is get some gain going out of the compressor and bring the signal back to the level that it was before it got compressed. So from looking at it, we're getting about three to about four or five dB. I don't like that. I like to have, have about two to three dB. So we're going to adjust the threshold until that's the, the case. Nice. That's cool. So now we're going to boost about 3 dB going out. 
So about 2.4 because the signal isn't getting compressed 3 dB every time. So we have to kind of compensate for that. So you want to be around that area. So the real difference will be made when you bypass and unbypass. If I turn this on and turn it off, I shouldn't hear a drastic change in the volume. Should hear a change in as far as how the mix sounds, but the volume level should still be the same. exactly how it should sound you shouldn't be hearing a drastic change i can tell the difference you know the piano comes forward some more on the right side you know and the bass just gets a little bit you know a little bit more smooth a little bit more rounded which is which is which is good you know so thirdly i would typically add a tape machine in this situation i don't have a tape machine yes there are free plugins out there that i could get but there's no need we'll just compensate so what i will add is i'll add a little bit of distortion a little saturation to to the track which is basically exactly what um i would use the tape machine for is just to add a little bit of you know saturation a little bit of um distortion so i'll use this overdrive and this is where you have to be careful because overdrive can get out of hand very, very, very fast. So if we play this. You know, the signal is distorted, you know? But this seems to be very subtle, so I can actually drive this a little bit. So my levels right now, without the overdrive, about minus six. So let's turn it on. Before we increase the drive, my levels are still peaking at about minus six. So I'm going to use the drive now to kind of drive this, or no pun intended, but I'm going to use the overdrive plugin to increase the level and go up to about minus four minus three that will be pretty fine for me cool and i'm liking that song you know and we're, we're not at zero but we're getting close, you know, and, and I'm really liking what I'm what I'm hearing. You know, that right there, that exact chain, like I said, different plugins, but the same exact order. An EQ, a bus compressor, and some sort of saturation, distortions, just to add some air into the track and I open the track up. That's basically my mix bus. You understand what I'm saying? Um, from that, I will bounce the track out and then master it separately so because i don't want to bounce it out what i'm going to do is i am going to basically do what we call bounce in place so i am i'm just going to record the master bus inside of fl studio and we can hear the processing um what we have done and we'll do you know just like a quick a b just so we can see what exactly it was that happened so i'm going to fast forward this portion of the video because i don't want to just sit here and play through it and then we'll compare the two files in the next video and go and add the final touches which is a mastering limiter or a compressor and and bring the volume up to to standards so until next time it's your boy it's beast truck star peace